What's up folks? Just got done eating some Mexican at the local Mexican joint, La Brisa's. I got the yard mode and I'm gonna sneak down here to the pond and do a little bluegill fishing with my fly rod. Something that's easy to do. I'll talk to you a little bit about it and hopefully I'll catch some. I think I will. They're definitely moving around. Okay, I just walked back here to my pond. I got a little five acre pond behind my house. And I'm gonna catch some bluegill on a fly rod. I'll show you my setup here. Just got a nine foot, five weight fly rod. And what I'm gonna be doing here is, I'm gonna be throwing this little, it's like a size 18. It's called a blue poison. It's got a little tungsten bead on it. And I got that set up about two and a half to three foot below a small strike indicator. Got floating fly line, and I think I've got about a 5X tippet, which is five pound leader. So I'm gonna make a few casts, see if I can catch some fish. You know, the nice thing about bluegill is they're very, very predictable. They're almost always biting, especially in the evening. So you can come down to a pond just about anywhere and you know when the fishing's tough the bluegill will usually come through for you and it's a blast catching them on this fly rod um this this is just a white rivers fly rod it's from bass pro shops white rivers fly rod very inexpensive fly rod and i've got a little ross reel um they make some inexpensive reels as well but if you're wanting to get into this you know, you don't have to spend more than probably 60, 70 bucks to get a decent fly rod, especially for pond fishing. Just get you a five weight, weight forward floating line. Start out with some 5X tippet. This is fluorocarbon. I like Rio, but you can buy uh, whatever you whatever works for you. Um, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get started, but let's, let's catch some fish before it gets dark. So you can see I've kind of got a confined area. I've just got a really small little area to fish right here because of the water level being up. I've got this cypress tree right here. So the only thing I can really do, I can't make a back cast. So all I'll be able to do is make a little short kind of side roll cast. And a roll cast is you're just going to let a little bit of line out like this. And you're going to make a well, I got a fish already. Look at that. Showing you how to cast. And first fish of the day. It's a little one. <laughs> You're a little one. So the roll cast is just... It's exactly what it sounds like. Let a little bit of line out. And all you do is just roll it forward, just roll it forward and there's your cast. So I'm gonna turn this chest cam on and I'm gonna point this camera out towards the middle of the lake and I'm gonna see if I can catch some fish before it gets dark. Just making a nice little easy roll cast. These fish are shallow. And we're going for bluegill species. See if we can catch some different species today. Show you my bait here. I've got a just an indicator rig, uh, 5x leader, a little blue poison. This is actually a size 18. This is for trout fishing, but it works great for bluegill. I'm just make it a little roll cast out there. Got a bite. There's the fish. Oh, it came off. Popped off. Try that again. A little short roll cast. You guys can see that. There he is. Just like that. Just watch that indicator. Goes down. Set the hook. They're getting bigger.
There it is. That would be a little female bluegill. Pretty little fish. So we'll throw it back. All right, let's see if we can do that again. So just let out a little line like this, make some little S-curves, pull your line like this, and make that little roll cast. It's real simple. Just takes a little practice. Just let that indicator kind of float around. You might just give it a little twitch every once in a while and watch it. There it is. Went down, got another little bluegill. It's that easy. It's another nice one. So we've been getting a lot of rain. This water level has really stayed up and these bluegill have spawned probably this is probably the fourth time that they've tried to spawn. Every time the water gets up, nice little bluegill. Every time the water gets up, they start making beds again. And we just got some rain about five days ago, so they're already back on the beds again trying to get it going. Let's try that again. Let's make a nice little easy cast out there. Let's watch that indicator, give it a little twitch every once in a while. Twitch. Little twitchy, 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 twitchy. Okay, we can get him by. We're gonna do another little roll cast out there. As soon as that fly settles towards the bottom, there it is. Boom, that's a better fish, I think. There we go, that's what we're looking for. That's a nice bluegill. Beautiful bluegill. Look at that one. Look at that one, that's a nice one. I'm getting bigger. That's one you could definitely clean and eat. Catching them on that little bitty fly, it's like a size 18, it's called a blue poison. Tungsten bead. Nice little fish. And they will stick your butt just like that one. I'm trying to be stupid. Okay, let's make a let's make another cast here and see if we can get another one. Looking for some of these bigger ones. There's some pretty decent ones out here. Make another roll cast out there. Just let it settle. Ah, missed him. Just let it settle and watch that indicator. Just give it a little twitch. Another little twitch. This fly's been paying off pretty good lately. Man, they're not totally committing to it. Every once in a while, I'll catch a big catfish, too. And that's that's pretty fun. In fact, I quit putting crappie jigs on because it seems like the catfish are wanting to steal those from me every time I throw them out there. Plus, this little fly, the bluegill, can get it in their mouth a lot easier. Seems to work out better for me. I'm gonna pull a little bit of line out and make a little bit further cast over there. I just gotta be careful because of this little cypress tree over here. We'll go over there, that's a kind of a fresh spot. That's about two and a half, three foot deep over there. There's a little ledge right there. That's a little one, but I got it. Look at that little guy. They all count, right? That's a like something that would be in the encyclopedia under bluegill. It's a perfect little picture. Let this guy back. There he got off on his own. Kind of trying this chest cam thing, different angles. Let me know what you uh, what you think about this. Leave some comments. Something different. It's kind of quick, and um, that way I can be a little more mobile. 
nice little roll cast out there just let that fly settle watch your indicator twitch it a little bit just keep your eye on it it's a real subtle bite just keep your eye on it I'm just letting it settle and then I'm making little short twitches like that you just want to move that indicator about an inch and then let it settle move it about an inch and let it settle Yeah, that was a bite. Let's try it again. A little short roll cast. Let it settle. Let's give it a little short twitch. And just let that fly settle. Ah, I missed him. Okay. This is a problem. I had this big brush pile right here. This happened to me yesterday. Might be time to get another fly. I don't know. We'll see if we can get this off of here. I think we're good. Got a little mess. See if we can get this cleaned up here. That is not what you want to happen, but unfortunately, when you set the hook on a fly rod and you don't have any resistance, the bait comes flying out of the water and anything behind you, you're going to get hung in. I think we're okay. Just gonna have to do a little bit of twisting, a little untwisting. Yeah, that that indicator shoots out of there like a rocket when you miss. And we got all kinds of obstacles around here. We got a cypress tree, we got a big brush pile, and haven't been able to burn this brush pile because the water won't stay down and I need to spread it out a little bit. So we've got a little bit of mess right here. I think we can do that and we're in good shape. We're back in business. Okay. I think we're good. So same thing, a little short roll cast out there. And just watch that indicator. Give it a little twitch. And I'm usually trying different depths in different areas. You know, like I haven't haven't thrown out over here, so I'll just kind of make a backhanded roll cast like that. I'll check this area out over here. Looks like I'm getting some action already. Had a little bit of interest there, but didn't quite take it. So I'm gonna twitch it a little bit. Ah. Missed him. So you can throw it right back out there. You know there's a fish there, throw it right back out there. Let it settle. And you know another way is you can just give it like a little steady strip and that makes it kind of swim in real slow. Sometimes that's what they're wanting. Just let it settle. There it is. Got her. go. Got another nice little bluegill. Look at that. Not bad. Not humongous. No jumbos, but there are some jumbos in here. These are just nice little, nice little bluegill. Let's see if we can catch another one here. Make a little roll cast out there. Oh, missed him. Another little roll cast. Watch it settle. What is going on? It's two in a row. Just watch that indicator. There he is. Got him that time. Feels like a good fish. I got him fight. Bluegill are good fighters. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice one. Nice one. They're getting bigger. Look at that one. Oh, yeah. Hey, Kool-Aid. 
Look there. Little jumbo. Starting to get that little hump on their head. See how they get that hump on their head? That's what happens when they get a little bigger. It's a really nice fish. Just let her go. Him go, actually. Okay, if you haven't ever used these football indicators, it's just a little piece of foam and it's got a slit right down the middle and it's got this rubber insert in the middle. And all you do, I don't know if you can see this or not, but you take your line and put it in that slit and then you just want to pull out on this rubber and roll it so your line goes to the back side of it. You do that on the top and you do the same thing on the bottom. So your lines lines on the back side here and your lines on the back side here. And that's all you got to do. It just holds that. A lot of times I'll do it again just to get it on there really good. But you always want it to be on the back side of that slit. And that's that's just a football indicator is what they call that. I use those a lot. You can take them off and put them on real, real quick. Easy to use. They make several different sizes. Another one. Messing with it. You know, you don't have to have crickets to catch bluegill. You don't have to have wax worms. Um, dang it. Fly rod's the way to go. You can throw a really small bait out there on a really, you know, a really small fly on a small indicator and catch these fish. There we go. That's a good one. That's one we're looking for right there. Oh, yeah. Much better. There we go. That's getting up there. It's fat. And I'm in the tree. Ah, I think I got it out. There we go. Yeah, there. Some medicinal marijuana. The cypress tree is in a bad spot when the water's up. We're gonna try that again, that was a better fish. Okay, let's let that guy go. He just came alive, he was sleeping. Caught him on that little fly, it's like a size 18 blue poison, look at that. Tell me they ain't spawning. That's not pee, that's milky. Yep, there's some heavy duty spawning going on down there. Yes sir. Okay, let's let him go. It's a nice fish. That fish was spawning. Um, had a milky substance coming out of its, yeah. And uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but bluegill spawn multiple times throughout the summer. They'll spawn three, three to five times in a season. So anytime the water level comes up, they're gonna pull up and make beds. So I'm, I'm fishing about a foot deep. There we go, that's a better fish. Oh yeah, got a good fighter here. Zippity doo da. There we go. Getting into those bigger ones now. Look at that. You're looking at it. It's another nice fish. There we go. There we go. That's a good one there. Another good bluegill. It's really nice to have a pond right by your house, you know. If you don't have enough time to drive somewhere, you can just step out of the house for a few minutes and, you know, get your fix. I usually, after I mow the yard, it's kind of like a tr tradition. Um, I put the mower in the garage and then I grab my fly rod and come down here and fish for a little bit until it gets dark. So I hope you enjoy this video. Um, coming up on 500 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like it, share it. And until next time, I appreciate it guys. Just wanted to do something a little bit different. I'm probably gonna do another video on uh, catching probably bass. There'll be some bass involved, but anyway, fly rod and poppers. So. Top water on a fly rod. That's going to be coming 
coming soon. Um, till next time, appreciate it, guys. Okay, I really encourage you guys to try this fly fishing deal out. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to show you the knot that I use to tie my fly to my tippet material. It's called a new swirl knot. Um, I learned it from a Doug Swisher video years ago, and it doesn't look like much, but it's a great knot. It's super quick. You know, one of his things that he, he teaches is you need to be able to tie any knot under 30 seconds. And this is definitely a knot you can tie under 30 seconds. Um, you can tie it in really low light conditions. And I've caught, um, I've caught several seven, eight, nine pound catfish with this knot, you know, trout up to six plus pounds, maybe seven, maybe eight. I don't know. Um, bottom line is it's, it's a pretty good knot, even though it doesn't look like much. Um, check it out. It's easy to tie and I'll show it to you right here. Okay. It's a new swirl knot. So pretend this is the eye. I'm going to come in like this. Give myself a little bit of slack. So, give myself a little bit of slack. Leave the fly resting in your other hand. So you're gonna take your tag on, tag in and make a loop behind your main line like this, right? And then you're gonna wrap it around the front and then back behind the back again. Come through that hole that you've created. And then you're just gonna tie that tie that knot like this right now you want to take your fly and come back through the back of that loop like this just pull it through it's going to leave you with this right here it's going to look like this now you're going to slide and grabbing this tag you're going to slide this knot and it's going to cinch up around your main line and then all you're gonna do is just work it down like that and cinch it up. And that's it, that's called a new swirl knot. And it doesn't look like much, but it works great. It's just a knot I've been using for years and years and years. And it's quick, easy, strong, and it, it does the job.